So welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Robert Potoff, and today we're going to be diving into a crucial topic. We're going to be looking at the differences between the Texas Receptus and the critical text. Now, understanding these differences is key to knowing why the King James Bible is the only Bible we can trust as the preserved Word of God. Uh, we're going to start by defining the terms. The Textus Receptus, or the Received Text, is the manuscript tradition that the New Testament of the King James Bible is based on. It's also called the Received Text because it represents the text that was handed down and received by the church for centuries. This text was carefully preserved by believers throughout history and used in the early church up through the Reformation and even used today. The critical text, on the other hand, is the foundation for most of your modern Bible versions or perversions, which I like to call them, including the NIV, the ESV, the NASB, and others. This text is largely based on a few manuscripts that were discovered much later, particularly the Vaticanus and, and Senecatus manuscripts, which date to the 4th century. Now, these manuscripts are, are older, but they contain significant omissions additions, and changes compared to the Texas Receptus. That means things were added, things were removed, and things were just flat out different. Now, why does this matter? Well, in the, in the early 1800s, we had a shift that began to occur in biblical scholarship. We had men out there like Westcott and Hort who would pervert the text and promote the idea that the older manuscripts must be more reliable regardless of the contents. No matter what they said, they must be more reliable. Now, this led to the creation of the critical text, which became the basis for most of your modern translations today. But older does not always mean better. The manuscript behind the critical text that were, or the manuscripts that were behind the critical text they were found in places like monasteries and the Vatican Library, um, not among common believers. And this means the common believer wouldn't have had access to these things. And when we compare these texts with the received text, we find that they contain a, a almost innumerable amount of changes. Um, there are so many changes, it is, it is flat out ridiculous when you start comparing them. And some of these changes directly affect important doctrines. Now, one example of a doctrine that gets affected and grossly affected is the doctrine of the Godhead. You may know it as the doctrine of the Trinity. In 1 John 5, 7, this is how the King James Bible reads. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, that translation comes from the Texas Receptus, but in the critical text, most of this verse is missing. Modern versions either omit or water down this powerful testimony to the Godhead, and this is just one example. There's so many places where key doctrines are weakened or altered in modern translations because of their reliance on the critical text. So why should we trust the Texas Receptus or the Received Text? Well, the received text was the text used by the early church and passed down faithfully through generations of believers. It's the text that was embraced by men like John Wesley and William Tyndall who stood firm on the purity of Scripture and rejected false teachings. I, I do want to pause for just a moment and reflect on William Tyndall. William Tyndall was a man who played a vital role in making the Bible accessible to English-speaking people. So if, you're, if you speak English and you have access to a Bible, you better thank William Tyndall for it. Tyndall was a scholar who translated the Bible, the Bible directly from Hebrew and Greek into English. Much of his translation work laid the foundation for the King James Bible. But because of his dedication to getting the Word of God into the hands of the common man, he faced an intense amount of persecution from the Catholic Church. In 1536, Tyndall was betrayed, arrested, and ultimately executed for his work. He was strangled and then burnt at the stake by the Catholic Church. His final prayer was, Lord, open the eyes of the King of England. And within just a few years, God answered that prayer. Uh, the King James Bible, based off the same received text that Tyndall used, was commissioned, and it became the Bible that we hold in our hands today, hopefully the one you hold in yours. 
Now, Tyndall's sacrifice, it stands as a powerful reminder of the cost of preserving God's Word. Men like Tyndall knew the importance of the received text, and they were willing to lay their lives down to ensure that future generations would have access to the pure, uncorrupted Word of God. And to this date, I don't believe any men have laid their their lives down for the critical text. Uh, they just has been no need to do that. Um, in contrast, the critical text relies on manuscripts that were not in wide use by the church. And they were more often altered by scribes who inserted their own interpretations. These manuscripts were rejected by the majority of believers for good reasons. They contained errors and omissions that compromised the integrity of Scripture. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. God's word has been preserved, and the received text is the clearest representation of that promise. Uh, Now, we have the King James Bible based on the Texas Receptus, or the received text, and the King James Bible faithfully reflects the word that God has preserved for us in contrast to modern versions based on the critical text that that introduced doubt, error, and confusion. But it's not just the New Testament. The King James Bible's Old Testament is based on what's called the Masoretic text, which we'll get into at a later time. This was the preserved Hebrew manuscripts that were passed down by Jewish scribes. Together, the Texas Receptus and the Masoretic text form the foundation of the King James Bible, giving us an inspired, infallible, and perfectly preserved Word of God in English. Now, as we continue in this series, I'm going to show you specific examples of how modern translations alter or weaken key doctrines. But for today, this is the foundation of the King James Bible. It is the Texas Receptus and the Masoretic Text. These texts have been preserved by God's hand through the ages. It's given to us today in a King James Bible, in a Bible that we can trust. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at the the history behind the translation of the King James Bible and how God pro, uh, how through providence God has guided that pro, that process. Remember the truth is found in the book, but which book? It's in that King James Bible. So get yourself one if you don't have one. Thank y'all. Y'all be blessed.